Hello, Geminis, and welcome back to Deku Tarot and to your December 2019 reading. Here we are, last month of the decade. So, um, this is for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. And um, if you have not um, seen any of my videos before, welcome. Um, thank you to all of my subscribers. And if you haven't, guys, do make sure to hit that subscribe button and definitely hit the notification bell to notify you when I go live or post up a video. <sighs> Gemini, I was just trying to, you know, sit in your energy there for a second. And I just feel very... I'm trying to find the words to describe it. I just feel really off kilter. <laughs> like, I thought that things were going one way, and now I feel very confused, and things have shifted and changed. Things that you thought, you know, you understood, and especially in terms of what you want, all of a sudden, it feels like you have less of a grip on what it is that you want and where it is that you're going. Um... Let's get into this here. Um, let's talk about the astrology a little bit as I shuffle. Um, we're using the Game of Thrones tarot for you for your uh, main spread right here. But don't worry, we'll be using a lot of other decks as usual. I like to mix it up. Um, we'll see how many decks you use. There was six. I forgot whose reading it was for the month. It might have been Pisces. <laughs> I think they had like six decks or seven decks out. It was crazy. Um, but let's get into this here. So... December 3rd, we have Jupiter, the planet of wealth, good luck, expansion, learning, um, moving into Capricorn, which is your eighth house. So you're going to be really digging deep, trying to go below the surface, focusing on what's really important to you. What are your priorities? Um, and you're going to need to really re focus on releasing the weight, anything that keeps your mind weighted, anything that brings about a heavy weight or a negativity in your mind or even in the back of it so you could be digging really deep to figure that kind of stuff out but it will be making space for new opportunities even in terms of wealth and career on december 10th we have mercury going into sagittarius which is your seventh house of relationships so there might be a lot of new love discussions about relationships really getting to know your partner or whoever it is you're trying to get to know um, December 11th, 13th, we have the full moon lunar eclipse in Gemini. So that's going to be shining um, light really on you. It's year. It's a full moon lunar eclipse in your sign. So that's pretty intense, guys. So you're going to be focusing really on what you're not happy with and how you present yourself. On December 20th, 21st, we have Venus moving into Aquarius, which is your ninth house. Um, and ninth house is all about traveling. So you could be, um, and, and Aquarius is such a humanitarian, expansive kind of, you know, ooh, I want to do everything. I want to experience everything and I want everyone to be involved type of energy. So you could be really meeting a lot of new people, a lot of new business um, deals coming up here. You could be writing a lot, you know, finding new ways to communicate to others um, and new ways to plan travel for the future. On December 22nd, we have the sun moving into Capricorn. And on the 26th, we have the new moon solar eclipse in Capricorn, both in your eighth house. So we got the sun in there and this new moon solar eclipse, the second one in the month, the last of the year. Um, this is not even the first Capricorn eclipse that we've had. As you know, there have been two others. So maybe um, we're wrapping up kind of what we have learned throughout, you know, each kind of tick in the box here of each solar eclipse, you know, there's been three. So what did we learn the first time? What came up the second time? How did that come up again? And the third time, it's going to feel like we're wrapping things up and you're going to have stuff coming up from, you know, again, the very beginning of 2019 and around, you know, I think it was July of 2019 that we last had this eclipse in Capricorn. It's going to be feeling really interesting. <laughs> and especially for you guys, because it's going to be in your eighth house. So it's really going to have you focusing on what you don't need in terms of any obsessive energies, um, especially within you that you're going to become very uncomfortably aware of, and you're going to want to change very profoundly. So that's why I feel like things are really up in the air for you. And that, I mean, being a Gemini, you can handle it better than I think most but it's hard to shift when, you know, you thought things were going to be a one way, be going one way, that you thought something was going to be a certain way, that things were going in one direction, and it just doesn't feel that way all of a sudden. So let's pull a card for your energy for this month here. I like that, though. Strength. Strength is your card this month. 
Strength is a card about self-mastery, it's about growth, it's about doing what needs to be done even if it's not pretty, even if it takes a long time, even if it requires a lot of courage, sacrifice, and learning to get there. A lot of really looking at what you don't know and adjusting because of that. And that's where I feel like we're at here. Um, strength can, again, also be more about using a more loving touch rather than a harsh one. You know, it usually signifies, it usually has like, you know, a woman and a lion and she's petting the lion. And usually, obviously, in real life, you would not pet a lion and that would not be what would happen. It wouldn't act like a dog or like, you know, a lab in your arms there. <laughs> um, it would probably bite you, but she has, you know, trained it. She has given it a lot of love and a lot of real, um, a lot of reason to trust her. So you have to have a lot of trust and faith this month, it feels like, in in yourself really and overcoming whatever it is right now all this confusion all this weird energy you're overcoming quite a bit of it sorry i don't want this to drop the tarot desk is a bit of a mess right now <laughs> it always is so now let's go on what your focus is going to be on this month here gemini and again if it doesn't resonate with you i highly recommend checking out your sun especially your rising sign your moon sign um your venus that resonates for you as well. I'm going to try to get love readings out this month as well, so keep an eye out for that. And yes, I am still using a Halloween mug. Why can't it just be like half the year? <laughs> so let's see. What are your goals? What is your focus on this month? Gemini's. What's this that really... <laughs> I don't, want, I don't want to laugh, but it kind of does make me laugh. Four of Swords. You want to rest. You want to relax. You want to recuperate. And that's that's okay. And that's what you should be focused on. I'm going to actually pull out one more because I feel like, you know, with you, there's always two sides to the coin. I don't know why. I just feel like there's one more. <laughs> yeah, okay. Three of Cups. You want to focus on enjoying things or what you need to focus on. If you are if you are not and you're not in that headspace, you need to start focusing on celebrating what you have, on enjoying things. It is the holidays um, for a lot of people. So you need to focus on relaxing, on enjoying the time that you have with the people that you love, making sure that it is no, you know, that they know that you care about them, making time for them, and making sure that you yourself are enjoying life at this time and that you're getting enough rest because again things have shifted and you haven't really been able to really grab the reins yet and that's okay so now we're going to look at the weeks and how they play out here okay just need to make enough room over here um also i do want to bring up you know jupiter is trining uranus mid-month Uranus and Taurus, and that's Jupiter in now um, Capricorn, which it just moved into, and it will stay in for the next year. And then we'll move into, uh, we'll have so much moving into Aquarius, and it will be kind of the dawning of the age of Aquarius, which is, it's a lot. There's a lot happening in the, the 20 and 2019 going into 2020, 2021. It's going to be crazy. So just be open to change and be okay with things changing and shifting, everybody. I don't feel like I need to tell you guys that, but other signs but anyway so um jupiter is trining uranus mid-month um uranus mid-month which can bring lucky breaks to many but can equally bring a lot of this destabilizing revelations in terms of finances you know wealth property um and that can be pretty destabilizing because the ground we stand on is really awakening to demonstrate you know where our values attitudes um towards wealth and possession need to change if future growth is really going to be sustainable so i feel that that's where your headspace is at and where it's even been at probably even before this trying you're shifting in a lot of views in terms of i think wealth value possessions money work yeah I'm actually going to keep that as one of your focuses this month. And now we're going to look at week one, two, three, and four. Just pull some general energies. But yeah, eight of coins. Like I said, work. Oof. 
I think this is going to be a lot more comfortable for you going into this season. I think you're going to have to just, again, have trust, have faith in the journey. Because you can't always hold on to the moving parts and see where they're going to end up. Ooh, Gemini. I really like it, though. I think this is what we needed. Even if it doesn't feel like it at first. Um, I don't see a lot of negative cards so far. So we're going to now move on. Okay. I'm sorry. I need to like move. <laughs> I needed to move the... I don't know why I had my Astro Moon Diary up. And I was just like, this is just in the way. So now we're going to get some clarifiers for each week with a different deck. And then we're going to look at... Or actually... Yeah, we're going to do that first. No. I'm sorry I'm switching around so much right now. But actually, we're going to look at your biggest obstacles and defining events this month. And then we're going to go into week by week and see where this falls. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Okay. I was like, no, it doesn't feel right to just go week by week right now. So let's now look at your major obstacles, your defining events. And I will show you real quick, actually, before I get too into it, week by week. Ace of Spears, first week. The Fool, second week. Three of Spears, third week. Five of Pentacles, reversed. The last week. It's a pretty good week if you trust and have... I mean, it's a pretty, it's a pretty good month. <laughs> it's a pretty good month if you trust and have faith in these energies. It's like, you know, very Sagittarian with Ace of Spears, the Fool, Three of Spears. We're just... There's a lot of Spears, and... Spears are meant to be thrown at targets. They're meant to hit their mark, very much like Sagittarius. And we have the energy to throw not just one, it feels like, but multiple this month. And kind of ride this adventure out without expectations. And you're going to get there. You're going to get out of this lower place that you've been in. Because, yes, we're following this energy like the fool and we're kind of dancing around and jumping from one thing to the next this, um, this month here. But it's in, the benef it's in your benefit to be a Sagittarian, to get into that mindset. Because if you don't focus on the five of pentacles that you know is there and that you've been feeling, that separation, that loss, that worry, the fear that something is maybe separating you in a relationship, maybe something's coming between you, maybe it's about money, maybe it's about finances, um, it's about not getting enough of something. And you will be getting enough by the end of the month, but you kind of have to, again, play like a Sagittarian. I'm not saying that they're not wise and structured and extremely intelligent, but they have this almost whimsical energy that only fire signs have, and especially so Aries. But Sagittarius, it's, it kind of like peters out. It's like Aries is just like so whimsical and running around. They're like little fairies. And Sagittarians are more, again, like centaurs. They have, they have bows. They've got arrows. They have direction. And yet there's this wild nature and this inability to kind of tame them. And then when you get to Leo, the lion, that's a totally different energy. That's no fairy running around like willy, not so much willy-nilly, but more whimsically. It's more, you know, I have fire and I have real fire and direction here. And where will I take it? And everyone's looking at me. It's not small and flitting. It's powerful. And you need to get that again, that in between there on that Sagittarian energy, that wildness of, you know, sometimes we don't know how it's all going to turn out. But it'll, it's going to turn out fine as long as we are in that energy. I'm just repeating myself. <laughs> You're going to be fine. Anyways, I've been shuffling forever now because I got into the energy here because it was just in my face. <laughs> All right, so let's look at your major obstacles to finding events. Hmm. Two of Swords, Upright, and especially so Reverse has been really big this season. And I think it's because we are finally making some decisions or we no longer see something as a block in terms of which way do we go, what do we do. Maybe, again, I feel with you, this is more like things have been taken away from you. You thought you knew what you wanted. You thought you knew where this was all going and... 
now you just are going from that to not understanding anything, not understanding what you want and needing to kind of deal with the decisions that have been made. Yeah, your major defining events and moments, your your challenges are <laughs> tough, but they're going to be okay. You really have to look at where you're not aligned with somebody or something, a job or a relationship, and you're going to have to really figure out what to do. I think with the two of swords reverse, once you are aware of it, you can't really unsee it and not deal with it. So I think that's kind of where you're getting these obstacles, where you're getting this. But I think again, you have to take a new route. It's like the energy that we're stepping into on a larger collective scale, like without, you know, sign by sign and house by house and all that other very little crap there. I'm um, not saying that it's crap, but you know, it's just very particular. On a collective scale, we're being asked to, again, take that third wand, to go the different route, to try something new. If we go same old, same old, you know, to do the same things, expecting different results every time, eventually you're gonna drive yourself mad and crazy. Um, so it's time to start approaching things in new ways and to see things in different lights. Whether it's painful because something really isn't in alignment and we're not happy in a home situation, in a relationship, in a work situation. There's something that feels out of alignment here when you look at it and it's supposed to be perfect and you can't really ignore it anymore. Maybe you're just not getting enough from a relationship. Maybe you're not getting enough from a job. Maybe you just don't feel great there, but It's about your approach to it and it's about where you go from finding this out from understanding this that really brings you to a much more comfortable place so it's weird the empress feels like open arms happiness abundance joy she just feels really good to me not even so much a person an energy of somebody else it just feels like what you have been trying to manifest where your perfect place your perfect paradise here you can get there but you again have to approach this with what do i need and what have i not been getting and what do i do about this now because you want your future to be like the empress she's got everything that she needs she sits she kind of just sits there and manifests it in the food grows around her, life comes to her. She is able to create the life that she wants. And that's her main energy. Harmony, abundance, love. And there you are. If you make the choices this month to ride it out like a Sagittarius, to take new routes, to shoot towards new goals and destinations and be at one with all these shifting energies. See where you end up. Then you're going to be fine. The choice will be there. There you are. When your card comes up in a reading upright, a card that represents you in the Major Arcana, I know that things are good. I know that everything's going to be okay, that you're coming into a more stable structured place that you want to be in you know the lovers not you know taking out the choice taking out the about love stuff that everybody kind of associates with the lovers it is it talks about you know again the conflict between different attractions it talks about finding the balance in between all of that and that is you the two sides, you're finally going to be coming at peace. You and Libra have been battling with that. It feels like for a while, Libra not being able to find the balance that it craves and you not being able to find your own type of Gemini balance here in between the conflict between two types of your, you know, two sides of yourself. How do we reconcile? How do we get to a place that feels good to me? 
things are going to come back into alignment. They will, but you're going to have to ride this out and you're going to have to face some, some things that you've done and you might be asking yourself, why would people let me do this? Why did, why did this have to happen? Why did I make this decision? I'm, I don't know why I get that person. Why did I do this? Why did I make this decision? Why didn't I say anything? Why did people see me do this and not say anything to me? For some, it's that you've been working on the wrong relationships. You've been putting effort in with the wrong people, the wrong crowd. And you haven't really been true to yourself in terms of, I think, friendships, work, love. I mean, it could hit any of those areas. But it's going to, it's going to hit. And you're not going to feel that good about your role in it all. Let's get some cards of advice. And I was going to pull clarifiers for each week, but they just feel like they're meant to be lighter. In that first week, we start this off with so much great energy, potential, goodness. There's just a lot of new energy that we can take on. You know, new beginnings, new ideas, creativity. It's all abound. So take it and run is how that feels to me. It just feels, you know, like there's a source, there's like source and origin kind of energy there. To that The fool doesn't worry so much about, you know, where this adventure will end up, but that... You know, we have to follow where we're being pushed to right now. And we're going to have to, again, ride it out like the fool. There's not a lot of structure there, but you're going to find your way through it like an adventure. And there's not much I feel like I can tell you in terms of direction with the fool energy and the ace of spears. You've got to follow the wind. You've got to follow your own fire. You have to follow what matters to you and what brings you the fire. Three of spears is finding, to me, a new ways to communicate and new ways to bring in the change that we want, the progression that we want. Where can we get three of rods twice right above each other? And for me, you know, oh, I love seeing this. <laughs> um, if you are any type of spiritual, if you are any, you know, a reader yourself, and I know I have a lot of people that watch this that are readers or psychics or some type of spiritual, um, listen to your intuition. And if something is guiding you in a specific direction, go for it. Even if it feels different, even if you've never done it before, even if you never thought you were going to have to say or do some of this stuff, it's going to get you where you want to go, surprisingly. To you, I'm saying surprisingly, not to anybody else. <laughs> Five of coins reverse is coming out of that isolation, being able to see again, to be in contact and communication with others, coming out of poverty, loneliness, lack of wealth. You're getting there. The choices will be there. It's meant for you. Success is, is yours. Abundance is yours. Getting where you want to go, it's all here for you. But let's look at a couple cards of advice. King of Pentacles. Yeah, we got to stay grounded. It's interesting because, again, with all that Capricornian energy, there is this need to stay grounded, but at the same time, I mean, just don't get too crazed. Don't get too directionless with the energy, but be willing to try out new cups, new paths, new interests, new experiences, new ways of going about things. It will be profitable to you. But also, listen, it is going to be very important for you guys to listen to your gut and listen to or focus on what drives you rather than any of the other things that kind of block that. What drives you? What brings you passion? What do you want? You're being asked that again, and even though you thought you knew, you have to figure it out again. And you will. You absolutely will. But you're going to have to focus on why you no longer want what you have and what you thought you wanted all along okay wow hmm. <laughs> i don't really know what to say after all that gemini wow um let's i just saw let your friends help you but for some reason i couldn't grab it so we'll see if it comes out again we're getting a dorian virtue um romance angel cards first card out is playfulness to recapture romance allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine Again, there's a playfulness to this month that you need to recapture in terms of romance if you want it to be that way. 
don't get all serious. Even if you like want things to be serious. Heart to heart conversations. Honestly discuss your feelings with each other. You'll get there, don't worry, but you gotta talk about it. Um, whether it's with friends, but I would say, especially with that other person. Um, and you might kind of feel like this girl or this, or this guy in this, where, you know, she's talk, talk, talking at him and he's like, God, how am I going to get out of here? But, um, and I feel like almost that's the two sides of you needing to communicate <laughs> and hating the whole act of it, hating, just hating the act of it. Like, God, do I really have to? Yes, you do. Of course you do. Oh. For some of you, it's facing some unrecruited love, whether that's your feelings for somebody or someone's feelings for you. There's not enough attraction or chemistry to keep this relationship going. And again, this doesn't always have to be in a love situation. It could be in a friendship or in a work situation where, you know, no matter how much you want to love something, you just don't. You just don't have the feelings for something or someone anymore. Or that person could be feeling that towards you. Take it how it applies. Um... Let's get a Halloween Oracle by Stacey DeMarco for um, some last messages from Spirit for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Ooh, I love that. I don't even really want to pull it anymore, but I do because, well, I might not do, yeah, we have to do a love reading now. We're going to have to do love readings for the month. There's been too much craziness as keeps coming up I'm like I feel like it's gonna be like a love actually <laughs> reading for like each of the signs you know what maybe I'll watch love actually and I'll incorporate some quotes or something into it I don't know I, the movie's so cheesy but it just feels like a month where a lot of stuff with love is gonna happen and then you guys get the only love card in this deck eternal love and being Gemini this card looks kind of familiar right <laughs> all right skull of stars is your first card infinite possibilities so it is easy to feel small in a world that is so busy and personal and seemingly self-absorbed we can at times feel lost and unclear about our direction and lose sight of our place in the cosmos the skull of stars reminds us that we are only limited by our own imagination and boundaries if we can dream it it is possible this card indicates that you need to think bigger and more broadly about your future and what you would like to achieve. Perhaps there are false beliefs, often old, that no longer serve you as you grow and change. Sometimes these beliefs may not even be yours. They may have been imparted to you by your parents or the wider community, yet feel rather incongruent to you. You need to endeavor with all of your heart and soul to live the life you want and honor your own wishes and truth. Ooh, eternal love. I want to say also, I don't know why I get this, I and mean, we're going to talk about it in the love reading, but I feel like some of you guys, like, wanted somebody, wanted somebody, wanted somebody, and now that they're, now that you have something, it's like, I don't think this is what I want for some of you, like, single ones, or, like, if you were trying to get back an ex, I feel like you're like, you got this, you find, like, you finally got this person to talk to you or get back into your life and maybe have something there, and then you're kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> And you might have some choices. <laughs> Eternal love. Love is love is love. And it transcends physical death. Um, should you choose this card, you are being reminded that love is the most powerful force in the universe. It is more powerful than death itself. Love lingers. It leaves its own legacy. And we should be aware of this every day that we live. For those that are ready for and desiring of a partner, it also indicates that a significant love is close at hand and to be ready to be, op and to be, ready to open up to this new experience. For some of you, it's choosing new instead of old. Or it's opening yourself to love that you feel, for some reason, closed off from. I don't know. We're going to have to get into it in the love reading. Let's not talk about it here. <laughs> All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, do check out, again, your messages for your sun, moon, rising, and Venus. They might resonate better or have messages you need to hear. Have a wonderful and blessed December. Happy holidays for those that celebrate. And um, thank you guys so much for all of your support. Do make sure to subscribe. Do make sure to share if you enjoyed the video. It really helps and I super appreciate it. And if you want any other um, readings, content, or other other what is wrong with me? Or any other information or things that I post, etc. Um, you can go and check out my Instagram. I have that linked below as well, along with all the information. I'm booking a private reading with me, all in that description box below this video. All right, have a great month, guys. Namaste. Enjoy your eclipse this month, too. <laughs>